Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to this week's edition of Advanced Bass Fishing. Got a little on the water video for you guys today. We're gonna to be giving a complete tutorial on some advanced techniques for fishing boat docks. Out here at Grand Lake, Grand Lake's full of boat docks. This is a perfect lake to really teach you guys about how to fish a dock, where the fish use it. So we're gonna get into some really deep dive in detail in today's video uh, on how to fish boat docks here. Also guys, we'll get started here, just a couple quick housekeeping tips every week on advanced bass fishing. If you guys like the content here, the longer form content, one of the best ways, or actually the best way you can do to support the channel is, is to subscribe here to the Advanced Angling channel. And also please use and bookmark my Tackle Warehouse link in the description of the video. If you guys use that link to purchase your tackle, that's a great way to support the channel because every purchase you make, we get a small percentage of the, of the commission on the sale of each uh, lure or whatever you buy. So much appreciated with that. So you guys can check all that stuff out in the description here. Okay, guys, what we're going to do here is I've got a long line of boat docks here. Now I'm going to just sort of get on the trolling motor and I'm just going to show you guys, like I, I just, I can't, you know, with me with the cell phone, it's hard to use a cell phone and, you know, film a video fishing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to go down this row of docks and I'm, I'm going to explain to you exactly how I would go about fishing it as far as approaching it, different conditions, water, water clarities, you know, water temperatures, and just sort of give you guys a full tutorial on what you need to know about fishing boat docks. So there'll be no stone left on turn. So, okay, anyway, guys, I'm gonna turn the camera around here and we'll get started. Okay, guys, we're just sort of gonna head down this row of docks here. There's a bunch of docks in front of us. And I'm just sort of gonna go through each one of these docks that we go through. I'm, t I'm gonna explain to you how that I would go about fishing it. So we're just gonna start around here. First of all, guys, the my favorite place of a boat dock is the walkway area here. I have caught more fish and bigger fish along these walkways than about anywhere uh, on the docks. You know, I mean, it, it depends, but I mean, that, if you look at, if I look at all the fish I've caught off docks off the past 40 years, a bunch of them have come under the walkways here. Now the walkways are really good because there's a lot of different stuff going on. Um, you've got the inside part of the dock that tends to be in a little bit shallower water. You usually got a bunch of cables and then you've got the, the ramp itself. Now, one of the reasons this is one of the key places on a dock is that it's hard to fish it because you got a bunch of stuff in the water. You usually got like these wave runners, you got cables, you got stuff underwater. Somebody's got a crappie pile there. It's easy to get hung up with. So my favorite way to fish this, it depends on the water clarity that I'm fishing. Now here we've got it's pretty stained water. You've got a couple feet of visibility. So my favorite way to fish these is skipping some type of a bait up underneath there because I really want to try to get, you know, as far up underneath there as I can. So I skip a light jig, maybe a wacky rig, maybe a shaky head, something like that can be really good. A swim bait can be also pretty good. But the skipping technique is for places I can't reach. Now, another thing you need to look for is anything in the water because a lot of these docks, they plant brush, um, pay attention, you know, any type of brush you see in the water is going to be key. Now, this right here, the, the intersection of where the inside part of the dock hits the walkway, obviously you can't skip and flip in there, skip or skip your bait back in there. But see how complex and gnarly that is? It's shady, you got a lot of stuff going on. This is where you sort of have to pitch and flip in those tight areas. Now, yeah, you probably are going to lose some baits, probably lose some fish, but you got to get them on to worry about that. Um, also, guys, as far as this goes, a lot of it has to do with the depth of the water in relationship to the clarity. For, personally, I prefer, I don't like to have any more than five feet of water on the inside part of the dock, regardless of the water visibility. It seems like if the water depth is over five feet on the inside part here, they don't use it quite as much. They're, ten, they're gonna tend to suspend more. Uh, they're gonna use the shallower areas with that. And also guys, don't forget to fish the bank in between the docks. The bank in between the docks can be really, really good based upon the type of shoreline cover it is. This is sort of gravelly, but you know, if you got rock transitions or a steeper place, that can be good. Okay, now moving around the other part of the dock, if you've got Okay, one of the things about this is, is how the fish position here are relative to the water depth around the dock. Now again, if you've got anything less than four, five or six feet of water anywhere along the dock, the fish are going to be on the bottom. So that would tell me I'm going to be pitching jigs, creature baits, worms, that type of stuff. 
if the water is over five or six feet deep, say for example it's it's 10 or 12 foot deep here, that's when these fish are going to be suspended regardless of the water clarity. So if it's deep along here, you need to swim something just underneath those floats. Also guys, if the water is shallow or under five feet, don't hesitate to pitch and flip over the over the dock into the slip there. That, that Nobody hardly fishes in there. And it's a great place for fish to hide. It's thick cover. They don't get messed with. So pitch your jig or pitch your creature bait in there. Now, outside of the dock here, um, this is where the fish are usually suspended at. And also, this is where you're going to find a lot of brush out. A lot of people that have brush on a dock, this is where they plant it. So pay attention on your depth finder. Again, if the water depth is over six, seven, eight feet deep on the outside part of here, you know, throw a jerk bait, spinner bait, chatter bait just under the floats. Again, if it's if it's shallower on the outside, then you can fish on the bottom a little bit. Also, pay attention to sometimes, like you can see the steel there. Now those don't, but sometimes the steel on the docks go all the way to the bottom, and those fish will relate to that. So that's a really good uh, thing to remember on that. Also, I don't see them here. Well, there's a ladder right there. Anytime, the, uh, yeah, a lot of these guys have ladders up, but anytime that you see a ladder like that that's in the water, fish really like to suspend around those ladders. These ski do things, guys, right here, bass love those. It's something a little bit different as far as the, uh, from the rest of the structure of the dock. They like to suspend underneath those sea do floats. Anytime you see a rod holder like this, Pay attention because there's usually brush. Anytime you've got rod holders on a dock, it's a good indication that you've got some brush underneath the dock. Now the slips are also really, really key areas here. You really want to try to skip your baits as far up underneath there as you can. Like see the see the little opening there? Try to skip skip your jig, skip your creature bait, skip your chatter bait or whatever, as far as you can up in there. There's a lot of fish that usually get in there that don't get much fishing pressure. Now also, all docks are not created equal. Cause see, see how this dock here is sitting farther out off the bank than this one right here. Um, again, all this type of stuff, it creates a diversity to cover. Anytime that you normally have a dock with a long walkway, that's an indication it's a shallow dock. The water's shallow coming off of it. But sometimes you can pattern this. You can pattern the long walkways and other times you can pattern the docks that are right tied up on the bank here. Now, one of my favorite ways to fish a dock is when you get a real shallow dock like this one here. You can see it's super shallow. The water is only a foot deep here. Anytime you got like super, super shallow water, like in fact, I'm hitting the bottom right here. Like say, for example, that dock right there is probably only about, you know, two foot deep on the outside part of it. Those fish will get super shallow on those docks. I mean, I've caught a bunch of big fish where the water depth was only a foot or two, even if the water's clean by like pitching jigs up in the shade there. Those big fish will get really shallow on those docks because again, there's a lot of cover. There's shade, there's overhead cover with the floats. Don't hesitate, you know, to get it in super, super shallow water. Again, that stick you see in the water right there, never pass something like that up there. Now, another key part on a boat dock that I found are these floats that are under the dock. Sometimes these fish will relate specifically to these floats. I caught, I was fishing a tournament at Table Rock in March one time, and I caught four fish that weighed 21 pounds doing nothing but flipping floats. I couldn't get my fifth one, but sometimes they will definitely get right underneath the shade of those floats there. Um, openings under the dock, see that, see that large opening? In, that, that's another good spot. Anytime that you see something like that, make sure you skip or, or flip a bait up underneath there. Always good to get tucked into that shade. Now there's a prime example of a, a ladder right there. Fish like to suspend around those ladders big time. Now I'm gonna kick it up a little bit higher here. And one the, another thing with it, guys, oh, here's another good piece of structure. A lot of the docks like here, they have, you know, private ramps on there. Ramps are great places to catch fish, guys. And always throw a crankbait or a jerkbait or whatever on the ramp because the ramp goes out into the water. There's usually, you know, some riprap along the sides or it drops off. Ramps are fish holes and structures. Now, another thing to remember is don't get completely locked in on just the docks because you do have the bank behind you to fish. And one of the things I like to do is I like to pretend there's no docks on this bank. And I just, I, I, I picture what the bank looks like without any docks on it. 
And when you do that, you also want to fish the bank there. There's another good ramp there. And let me give you a prime example of what I'm talking about here. Now we're coming up on this dock right here. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it yet when we get behind it there, but there's this little cut in behind the dock there. Anytime that you've got some type of irregular feature that's different from the normal dock, make sure you get in tight and fish it there. Um, any type of rock transition or changes in the bank are gonna be key areas. Prime example, take a look at this right here. See how flat this bank is right here? Now watch it as we get over here a little bit further, you see it goes up to, you know, like a 60 degree angle bank. This whole thing, guys, is a big transition area. The whole bank was pretty uniform, but we get down to here, and this is the first transition area on this bank. So make sure, I hope the wind isn't too bad on this video audio here. So make sure that you fish you know, these type of areas really good any any time that you see some type of the rock transition areas. Here's here's another little good spot. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a stump in the water right there. Always pay close attention to that. Anything in the water is always going to be a, a good good place to hit there. And also, see that dock talk, tucked away in the back of that cut? Most people won't take the time to go fish that one dock because it's shallow, but a lot of times there can be a big one laying in just some of that super shallow dock over there. Um, steep rock banks or riprap are one of my favorite areas to fish docks. And one of the things that you want to try is, see this over here, is just picture this dock wasn't here and look how good this bank is. So what you want to try to do, if you can get your boat underneath there, do it. Because like get on your knees, try to push your boat underneath there, fish a crankbait or something parallel to those steeper rocks, I can promise you there's a fish probably laying in right there. But riprap banks behind docks are one of my favorite places to fish with it. Hey, we're coming up over here, we'll get around this back side. Now another thing with it on boat docks, sometimes there's a couple different things to consider. Sometimes it's just a matter of just covering water. And you know, you got a bunch of docks here and sometimes you can't really pattern, they just are where they are and it's a matter of just being efficient, hitting all the good looking spots. But sometimes you can pattern the dock based upon what I have found is the water depth. Pay close attention to the water depth on the dock inside and outside when you start catching a fish. And then a lot of times you can duplicate that. And once you find that depth or find that sweet spot that those fish are in, you can run down the lake and you can look at banks and look at angles, you know, where these same type of docks will be positioned at just by looking at your, your contour map on there. Like right there, see that cable running into the water? Anytime you see a cable in there, you know, make sure you hit that. There could be something down there tied on it. Always a good spot. Perfect situation here, guys. Look at this. You got a rock transition. You got a steep bank leading into a flat with a with a boat ramp coming there. There. This is a, this is what I would consider a high percentage area. This dock right here and that dock right there are going to be two really really good spots because they are positioned right within this transition area here. So th those are going to be. I, I would you know if I was catching a few fish on the docks, I'd really expect to catch some on on one of those two places there. So anyway, that sort of gives you an idea uh, just from looking at this row of docks, uh, what to look for there. Okay guys, a couple other things I wanna share with y'all before we wrap the video up here. The biggest piece of advice that I can give you on fishing boat docks, as far as after, you know, what we talked about here just a second ago, is you have got, you can't slop through boat docks. It's like when you're fishing boat docks, your boat positioning and your casting angles and your casting accuracy are critical. That's why most really good boat dock fishermen are also really good casters, and they're also really good at their trolling motor. Um, it's very important um, how to position your boat around a dock. In other words, when you come up to a dock, make sure that you don't come into it too hot. You don't want to get up next to the dock where you have to, you know, back your trolling motor up and prop wash the whole area there. So when you're coming up to a dock, make sure that you sort of glide into that area because these fish are wary. And any noise that you have, it, the, the noise reflects off of that dock more than it would just in open water. So just be aware that your trolling motor, your electronic ping, everything is sort of magnified around a boat dock. Try to be quiet, try to sneak up to the dock. You don't wanna, you try to keep that trolling motor noise to a minimum on there. And also make sure that you, that you really think out your cast before you start casting in terms of boat positioning. 
if you're wanting to fish underneath the walkways or on the inside part doesn't, or the slips, it doesn't really matter. Make sure that you think about how you want to position your boat and, and come at it from that particular angle. That's the angle on boat docks is so critical because sometimes those fish, you got to parallel like the outside or the front corners of them. And in order to parallel and get your lure there, you got to have your boat in the right position. You got to have your casting accuracy just right. And if those fish are suspended under those docks, they don't come out very far to hit a lure. They're, they're not stupid out there. So you have to get that bait right next to that dock. If you get, if you get it sometimes like, you know, a foot away from it, that's too far. Try to get your lure, whatever it is, as close to that dock as you possibly can get. It's super, super critical. Um, another thing with dock that, that's a big deal is anytime that water temperature is over, say 50 degrees, Shade is a really big thing. It's like, not so much if the water temperature is under 50, but once it gets over 50, and especially as it gets warmer, like up in the summertime, shade is everything. It's like those fish will relate to shade and they use shade as cover. Sometimes you can you could have like on one side of a dock, like a beautiful brush pile sitting next to the dock and, and the sun would be on it and the fish wouldn't be on it. And on, and on the other side of the dock, there could be no cover but there could be shade on that side of the dock and those fish will prefer the shade. They like the dark part of it. That, that allows them to ambush that prey better than anything else. So also pay you know close attention to shade with it. Um, the species of bass that you're fishing for also has a role to where those fish are positioned at. You're not small, for example, if you got largemouth spotted bass and smallmouth, smallmouth don't really use docks that much. I have caught some on them on deeper clear water docks, but spotted bass love docks. Um, and largemouth obviously too. One of the things I found out about uh, spotted bass on there, the spotted bass, unless it's the springtime of the year, like in April when those fish are spawning, those spotted bass really like to suspend around the dock. You can catch them on the bottom, you know, right around the time of the spawn, like in April, but the rest of the time of year, I catch a lot more spotted bass, like on little swim baits or jerk baits. So make sure that, you know, you do that if you've got a lake that's got a lot of spotted bass. And also, if you have a dock that has real clear water, like water visibility of over five or six feet, a lot of times those fish will suspend around that dock, but not like right under the dock. They'll suspend maybe 10 foot away from it. So make sure that you cast all around it in that clear water environment with that. Um, the main thing, guys, is just be stealthy. I mean, just be stealthy, take your time, don't slop through an area. Um, one thing that I will share with you, um, we look, the docks we show, I showed you guys here are floating docks, but a lot of you guys have piling docks. Like if you fish like the TVA lake, something like that, or like Norman in North Carolina, you've got telephone poles that make the boat dock and that those fish relate to a little bit different. They still relate to the shade big time. They still relate to the walkways, but they relate to the pilings. They don't, they don't suspend around those post docks like they do on the floating docks. So if you're fishing a lake that has a lot of uh, piling docks, those fish almost always are on the bottom. So pay attention to the water depth. Uh, again, most of the time, if the water depth is over five or six feet, you're not gonna catch many fish on the bottom, even on pilings. You need to move up to the, to the shallow part of the dock. And the best bait that I've ever found for a piling dock, guys, is a it's either a like a, a weightless Cinco or soft plastic stick bait or a shaky head. Skipping a shaky head up underneath there is really good. Um, swim baits are, and glide baits are real good. Sometimes like in the fall time of the year, you can catch them on th those big glide baits and swim baits. That's a really good way to catch them. But uh, they're great bass structures. They're a pain in the butt to fish. Ideally, if it, if it was up to me, I don't want to ever see a boat dock on a lake again, but we're forced to fish them. Um, I would prefer just the natural pristine lake, but there's getting to be more and more docks on our lakes as the lakes get more developed. You've got to just pretty much how to know how to fish them because say for example, here on Grand Lake or a lake like Lake of the Ozarks or Lake Lanier, um, most of the time, if you're not fishing docks, you're not going to be catching the good fish. Those good fish usually are around the docks if there's a lot of docks on the, on the lake that you're fishing. One final thing I'll leave with you guys is when you approach a dock, look at that dock and say, where would somebody not want to cast because they don't want to mess with getting hung up? That's where you need to cast. If you see a tight area in there where you say, man, I don't really want to cast in there. I'm probably going to get hung up and lose my bait. Or if I get one on, I ne I'll never get it out of there. Go ahead and make that cast because 
most all the big fish I've caught on docks have come in places where when I set the hook and I felled them, it's like, oh man, how am I gonna get this thing out of here? That's just where those big ones live with it. So anyway, a little bit different video here, guys. Hope it helps you out with the dock fishing and we'll be back next week with another one. See y'all.